Hello, mathematicians. After today's lesson, you'll be able to solve equations involving cubes and cube roots. Remember that cubing a number means finding the volume of a cube with that side length. Since in a cube all three sides are the same length, you would find the volume by multiplying the side length times itself three times, or raising it to the third power. That is why raising a number to the third power is referred to as cubing the number. So 3 cubed or 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27. And here it is in the notation of 3 raised to the power of 3. So 3 cubed equals 27. Also remember that taking the cube root of a number means finding the side length of a cube with that volume. So if I wanted to find the cube root of 8, and again this is the notation for finding the cube root of 8, I'd want to find the side length of a cube that had a volume of 8. Well, since you'd have to multiply a length times width times height and all those are the same, you'd have to multiply some number times itself three times to get 8. That number is 2. The side length of this cube would have to be 2, so therefore the cube root of 8 is 2. And finally, remember that squaring a number and taking the square root are inverse operations. When this happens, when two operations undo each other, they are considered inverse operations. Since squaring and square rooting are inverse operations, it should follow pretty closely that cubing and cube rooting are also inverse operations. If I take a number z and cube it, then cube root the result, I will just get z back. The same thing follows, take the cube root of a number w, then cube the result, I will get w back. We can quickly verify this by, trying, by plugging in a couple of numbers. So for z cubed, let's plug in the number 2. So we want to cube it first. When we cube 2, we get 8. And the cube root of 8 just gives us back the 2. So cubing 2, then cube rooting the result, is the same as if nothing had ever happened, and we just get the 2 back. We can also go the other way. I could take the cube root of 27 and then cube my answer. The cube root of 27 is 3, and then I'm going to cube 3, and I get the 27 back. So cubing undid the cube root. This idea will help us solve equations involving cubes and cube roots. This equation says x cubed is equal to 64. To isolate the x, we're going to do the inverse operation to cubing. The inverse operation to cubing is cube rooting. So we're going to cube root both sides. Cube rooting undoes the cubing. We're left just with x equals the cube root of 64. So what number times itself three times would equal 64? That is 4. We can check that quickly by plugging that back in for x. So 4 to the power of 3 equals 64, which means 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64, and that is true. 64 equals 64. That checks out. So this is our answer. You may remember that a similar problem like this involving a square instead of a cube led us to also get the solution x equals the negative version, so perhaps x equals negative 4. Does that work the same on cubes? Let's check real quick to see. Would negative 4 also work as a solution to this? Negative 4 cubed would mean negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. The two negatives would multiply to be positive 16, but then you'd multiply it times another negative, and you would end up with a negative 64, which is not a solution to this. Therefore, you do not need to get both the positive and negative versions of the answer here. Just positive 4 works. So here's the other way. We, have, we now have the cube root of y equals negative 10. Is that possible? Well, we'll find out here. How do we undo the cube root so we can get y by itself? We undo cube roots by cubing. So we're going to cube both sides. Those undo each other. I'm left with y equals negative 10 to the third power, which means negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. The two negatives multiply to be a positive 100 times another negative 10 gives you negative 1,000. So the answer to this problem is supposed to be negative 1,000. We'll plug that in to check it, asking is the cube root of negative 1,000 equal to negative 10. Well, that's asking us what number times itself three times is negative 1,000. It would be negative 10. Negative 10 does equal negative 10, so that checks out, and y equals negative 1,000 is our solution. So now you can solve equations involving cubes and cube roots.